welcome to the LFCTR podcast. Uh, I'm your host today, Richie, and I'm joined by Firmino's number one fan, Tommy Lister. How are we doing? I'm good, I'm good. Even though Liam's not here, I've still got the intro. Nice to know. Yes, I know. I thought I'd stick stick with it. Uh, Liam is currently unavailable uh, and he'll be back next week, uh, where hopefully we'll be discussing another win. It was a great win at the weekend um, over Arsenal. And it looked like Jota made the difference, Tommy. Yeah, oh man, I don't even know where to start with him. I can't believe how good he is. It came across first, you know, I've always loved him and obviously he's been out for a few months and then I saw the international break and he scored a couple of headers or whatever, carrying Portugal and then there was a, there was a vibe around him, is, is he going to start or whatever and he came on and I'm pretty sure he scored, how long, how long did he get two goals in about 30 minutes or something ridiculous? Like, Yeah, yeah. and the first one like just just was almost instant as well on his arrival. Um, and again, Trent sticking it to Gareth Southgate, which is always nice to see as well. That was amazing. <laughs> I love, there was a lot of digs as well. You could tell all of the digs. He, he watched that as well. That's what, that's what he, he deserves it. That celebration made me smile. So yeah, he deserves it. He's brilliant. Um, and there we go. So hopefully he'll be in the, in the squad soon. So let's start with the transfers then. And just a quick transfer update. Uh, Dominic King has stated in the week that Barcelona or Real Madrid cannot afford to buy Mo Salah. Uh, following that interview that he did when he was asked if he would like to play in Spain, and of course Mo Salah said yes, which brought up all sorts of rumours. Um, but Dominic King, a very reliable Liverpool journalist, has said that Barca or Real Madrid can't afford him this summer. Celtic joined the hunt to sign Divock Origi after Inter Milan, Dortmund and Real Sociedad have been rumoured to be interested in the Liverpool cult hero. Italian news outlet Gazzetta della Sport has reported that Liverpool are ready to invest 50 million in Kaladu Kalabali. Um, again, maybe that might be a bit of a bit of a power move to make the Ibrahima Konate deal progress a little bit. Um, you know, I, I I don't know how you think about the Kulabali links, Tommy. Do you think they're realistic or something that maybe we're just trying to put in there? Um, I don't, especially with the likelihood of Konate coming in, there's no chance it's just some some source that's probably not reliable. Mention yeah. that the of it as player. Yeah, and I'd hope so because French news outlet RMC say that um Kanate has actually undergone a medical in France ahead of a summer move to the Premier League champion. So again, one exactly. to keep yeah, I mean one to keep your eye on that looks far more reliable. But for more information on any of those stories, please do head to our website. So the main rumor or one of the main one of the two main rooms that we're looking at today uh, you would have seen plastered everywhere, and that's over Haaland's movements. Um, so the 20-year-old world-class already forward, Erling Haaland, has been in talks with multiple clubs, and Liverpool are rumoured to be amongst them. Um, we know the super agent Mino Raiola was in Spain, uh, talking to Barcelona and Real Madrid, and he has apparently also been in talks with Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United and Liverpool. So we know that his uh, his release clause next summer is 75 million euros. However, it looks like, especially since Dortmund lost at the weekend, Champions League qualification looks quite slim, um, fighting a real battle there for Champions League qualification. It, it, you know, for me, I don't know about, about for you, I think Dortmund really are in a nice position where they cr could create a bid and war. Raiola is in a very nice position where he can you know, negotiate his agent fee and the contract towards Haaland as well. So, you know, 75 million euros, you would snap anybody's hand off next summer for Haaland. Um, it, rumoured to be about in excess of 150 million euros. Uh, firstly, can Liverpool afford that against, you know, bigger clubs? No. Personally, I don't think so. Um, so, but apparently that's what he's doing. What, what do you think about Haaland? What do you think about these movements considering, you know, Dortmund have a very important... Champions League game against Manchester City uh, upcoming and you know this is their star striker and his agent going about talking to other clubs before the season's even finished. I think part that's just you know Mino Ayala doing what he does he's always got to be a busy you know he's he's just that kind of guy that just wants to cause trouble he just cares about himself he's the same as any agent he's selfish making money and I, I think it's got to the point where like it probably won't affect the players too much because it's just part of the game now and you know, I, I don't think it'll affect the city game. Ha and the way Haaland is, he seems like a he seems like a robot. That guy. So, I think it'll just, you know, it'll be fine with it. it I don't think it'll affect the city game. And the public, I think they're going to go out regardless of Mino you know, being, you know, Ayala. Yeah, I think something that was interesting though in that report is that Madrid and 
Barcelona are interested in, but we've already heard that they can't afford Mo Salah. So, exactly. you know, it, it's one of those that... The only City can afford him, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm pretending they can, but that's, that's not true. Yeah, and, and again, it's, you know, Raiola's going to get the best fee for Dortmund. It's going to be a win-win situation for them because... They're not going to want to sell Harlan for 75 million euros next summer, let's be honest. He's worth way more than that. But that's his release clause. So he has to go this summer or he will go for 75 million next summer. Um, who? I mean, we, Tommy and I both spoke before the podcast as well. And I think we both agreed that, you know, Harlan is only going to come if one of, you know, Mane, Firmino or Salah leave. Um, and neither, so, none of them are. None of them are. No, I can't. I can't really see it if I'm honest as well. Um, but as I said, Dortmund are in the dogfight for Champions League football, so it certainly stokes the fire a little. I think um, Sancho potentially even they're not going to lose both. I think they're probably just going to take the 80 mil hit on Haaland, which is probably unfortunate because unless City pay up, uh, I I think he's staying for another year, and Sancho is probably going to come to England, isn't he? So I'd imagine, I don't think they they can afford to get rid of both in one season. No, um, and didn't didn't Pep say as well, which uh, the end is nigh if this is true, Pep said that Man City can't afford Haaland this summer as well. I don't believe that for a second. It's like when he does those interviews before playing like Burnley and we'll say Sean Dyche, one of the best managers ever seen or something ridiculous. He, he does it all the time. I just don't believe a word he says. But City have all the money in the world. Yeah, if, um, if a country can't afford one player, then there's something <laughs> wrong, isn't there? Yeah. Um, but no, it looks, you know... I don't. I think it's it's very it's, it's like you said, very coy from Raiola, and and that's how we know he does business. He's seeing what's out there. Personally, I just think it's a, a pretty snaky move considering they're playing Man City in a couple of yeah. days. Um, but there we go. That is Raiola, isn't it? So uh, yeah. Would you want even if I'm saying you can have Haaland, but you have to have Raiola? What are your thoughts? Oh yeah, obviously, obviously, I'd, I'd get over, I'd get over the agent. But he can be an asshole for us until he's trying to get a move to Barcelona in three, four years time. Which is what's going to happen wherever he goes in the next, you know, three, four years. He's always, if he doesn't go Madrid or Barca, he he will end up there because Raiola will, will stoke a move there. If he ends up at, let's say Madrid or Barca, he's going to come to the Premier League in four or five years. So, yeah, yeah, I don't, I just don't think. Will ever go for? I think Raiola being his agent will play a factor in him being a player we just wouldn't pursue anyway. Yeah, I I think so too. I think so too. Moving on to our second source, then uh, something which is a little bit, you know, perhaps more, um, let's say, cost efficient, and that's Memphis Depay. So, Master, the Spanish outlet, have said that Memphis Depay, who's out of contract this summer. Um, is interested in a move to Liverpool and Liverpool are one of four clubs with a chance of signing him. Um, the other clubs involved are Paris Saint-Germain, Barcelona and Chelsea, uh, who, who have you know come up, their names come up quite a bit. And the report goes on to say that Liverpool are very interested in signing Depay, especially since the fact he is on a free as well. Again, I personally think he would be a really good asset to Liverpool. He can play you know, on the left uh, side of attack. He can play in centre midfield. He can play in as an attacking midfielder. Again, we know Klopp likes that versatility. So I think that Memphis Depay would be a really good shout. I think also, like Salah when he came back, he's got something to prove in the Premier League because, you know, at Manchester United, he didn't set the world on fire. Um, and he is doing so now at, at Lyon. Um, what's your views on Memphis Depay? Yeah, I'd take him back if he was to like bin his Man United chain and all that, and his United shirts that he he, he paraded on Instagram. If he could, you know, if he could cut ties and <laughs> with them, I would yeah. take him for the for the reasons you mentioned. Like he is, I think he's a good player, and for the fee, I don't think we can say no when our backup at the minute is like Origi and, and whatnot. And then obviously, if we are going big on other players, and someone like if we were to sell Shakiri for ten to twenty mil and bring in Depay for a similar amount of money, I think that would be an upgrade. Um, smart business. As I, I, I don't know, has he got, I know he had an ACL, but I'm not sure if he has injury problems or not. But I, I'd be happy with Depay if it was strictly some sort of backup transfer and it was on the, on the cheap. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, since going to Leon, he has been doing really well for himself. This season, he's played 31 times, scored 14 goals and assisted nine, which is a pretty good record. And it's it's like you said, it's it's one of those that I know it's the French league, but at the same time, you know, it's it's going to be an upgrade a couple of times. I've seen him play well against City in the last few years. So, 
There's yeah. definitely something there with him. There's definitely something there. Yeah, and there's definitely an upgrade as well on, on Origi, like you've said. And and in, in France alone, in 170 games, he scored 69 goals and assisted 52. So his assist rate yeah. is really good as well. You know, he doesn't just score goals. He, he does assist a fair amount as well from that left-hand side or playing just behind. Um, so I think he would slot in really well. I mean, you know, if we're looking at Liverpool's attack, we've already got four quality attackers. And I think adding Depay in... He's not going to play every single game, but at least it allows, you know, one of those three and Jota. We should really just call them the four now, shouldn't we? Because it's not the front yeah. three anymore. Um, yeah. We should call them the four. But he would slot in there perfectly, wouldn't he, for that for that rotation? No, yeah, I agree. The Pio, I would not put him in as a football. <laughs> he's on um he's on eighty seven thousand pounds a week at Leon. So it's not even as if it's not the worst wage, I don't think. No, I don't think so. You know, I know I, that within our wage bill as well, like compared to our, our wage bill, it doesn't pay too high anyway. I think that, that's a reasonable deal that we can make there. Yeah, I mean, even if he goes to 100, 110, you know, mm. he's on a free transfer at the end of the day, you'll take that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. not... Milner was a similar player, I guess, a free agent with high wages that came in. And people yeah, I think him. Milner's on virgin on 100, isn't he? So he, he came in and I still think James Milner is the best Bosman of the Premier League era. He must be. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but in my opinion, these two. I think so. Um, yeah, I do, Mr. Reliable. Um, so, yeah, so Memphis Depay is, is certainly one to be thinking about. I thought he'd actually sign a couple of years ago. Um, when it, I can't remember the picture, but I think uh, Jeannie and Virgil were on a plane. I think it must have been an international tournament, and they were reading Depay's book. And I thought there was a subliminal hint there in Liverpool Twitter. Yeah, just I remember that. Like... It was in, yeah, yeah, I remember that. There was a lot of that. He had all the, he had all the red... Um... He was all gay and red, and so we all assumed he was coming to Liverpool for some reason. Yeah, that's it. And there was just like nothing whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, it was one we've been heavily linked with before. So yeah, I, I would I'd be more than happy with Memphis to pie, especially as well. You know, like like Salah did, he's got a point to prove. And the seven I, time celebration at Old Trafford, it would just be insane, Imagine wouldn't it? We've it would be, in the ground. It'd be brilliant. I just just for the fact, really, that. Man United have said no to him and, and yeah. sold him, you know, cheaper than what they bought him. And mm. yeah, just a, a real stick it to them. So, but they're yeah. the two main, two main rumours uh, for this week. And as always, for more transfer rumours, do head over to our website. So fact of the day, uh, there is only Tommy here, um, but Definitely. we're still, I'm still going to test Tommy and his uh, knowledge of double agents. So we've got, we are recording this on a Monday, and we have uh, yet to play Real Madrid. Uh, so I'm sure by the next time we record this, we'll also be talking about another win. Um, so I'm looking for double agents. So players who have played for Liverpool and Madrid in their careers. So there's a few obvious ones. And when actually I looked at this, there's a few that I thought, oh, I completely forgot about that yeah, person. Some really good players, actually, who have obviously played for Madrid and Liverpool. I've got which three off the bat, early doors. Pardon? I've got three I can think of early doors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's ten in total. Um, but again, when I looked, I was, I, you know, I, I just completely. Right. Yeah, um, and you just completely forget. So I'm going to give, um, I'm going to give Tommy thirty seconds, and he's going to try to name the players who have played for both Liverpool and Real Madrid ahead of our Champions League clash this Tuesday. So everybody listening at home, thirty seconds start now. Well, your brain freezes when you're actually doing it. I thought of three a second ago. Oh, yeah. Um... I'm on four and I'm stuck. Got ten seconds. It was obvious that I'm missing. Mm. Oh, I've got one. Hey, and that will do you then. So you've got five. Five, yeah, yeah. That's five. a good score. Okay, so which five have you got then? I've got Arba Loa. Um, good. Uh, Xavi, sorry, Xavi Alonso. Yep. Steve McManaman. Yep. Fabinho. Yeah. Michael Owen. Hey, well done. Good five there. So that means there were only five left. So Xavi Alonso, Michael Owen, Fabinho, McManaman and Arba Loa. To add to that was Morientes, who obviously mm. came in as a 
Owen replacement. Um, we didn't really get the Morientes in his prime, though. Um, something that I was devastated about because I remember always watching Morientes for Spain and thinking, this man is amazing. And then not so much for Liverpool. Um, Nicholas Anelka played okay. for both. Um, Antonio Nunes as well. Oh, wow. Over my head. Yeah. Uh, Nuri Sahin. And the one I completely forgot about, and you should never forget about this man, Yerti Dudek. Oh my God, at Real Madrid. Yeah, I, I know. No he um, obviously had a 2005 hero, so uh, Yerti Dudek there played for both too. There we go, the star behind Tommy's head. Um, mm. So yeah, I'll grubble our legs, won us in Istanbul. So there you go, there's there's 10 double agents, and I think... You know, there's some high, as you'd expect, because it's Liverpool and Real Madrid these players are playing for, but some really high quality players uh, playing for both. Um, so, yeah, it'll be uh, an interesting tie on Tuesday. And again, we were talking before the podcast and it's one of those that I'm not, I don't feel worried or anxious. And I don't know why. I don't know whether that's a little bit conceited, perhaps, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Um, against Real Madrid, I, I, I just think uh, they don't look... They've had injury problems like we have, and they also just don't look the Real Madrid that, you know, that embarrassed us. Not I say embarrassed us, beat us in Kiev. It's not the same anymore. I, I'm, no. I'm relatively confident. No, I was at, you know, uh, when the news came out about Ramos uh, being injured, I was, I, was sure I was happy or sad about that. I wanted him to be there. Yeah, I did too. And I know that Salah and Klopp have both come out and said they, they don't want revenge and... You know, it's nothing to do with what happened in Kiev, but there must be an inkling of Salah. There's no way it isn't. They're saying that because they've got to, and they're professionals. Yeah. But especially with Salah's mentality and the way he is, that's that is a one that was a hundred percent on his mind instantly. Or even the little thing like at the awards ceremony when Ramos tapped him on the shoulder. You know, that that will have been in his head. Yeah. But winning, going through will do. Going through will do. A lovely like Instagram post from Salah, somewhat cheeky. That that'll do. Yeah. Yeah. And. Madrid aren't the force, obviously, what they used to be. They still, they're still a massive threat, and you know, let's not, you know, let's not just pass them by, so to speak, so much. But I, I feel quite confident. I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, um, because I was adamant that we'd win Kiev. Yeah, I, I was, was adamant that we'd win. I was certain we were going to lose in Kiev. Oh dear, I was fine until uh, Gareth Bale came on. <laughs> and, it was uh, a salary injury for me, but we don't need to speak about that. The no. salary injury. No, and it's, it's it's one of the um, when they made the draw. Obviously, you, quite a lot of a few people wanted Porto because obviously it's the easiest one. But I did actually want Madrid. Um, you know, I think knocking out Madrid. We've done Barcelona, yeah, and we've done we've done Barcelona. And we've paid them back for Coutinho and Suarez. It's Madrid's <laughs> turn now. Yeah, I would like Real Madrid. They would have been nice. Yeah. And well, we got them. Hopefully, people listening to this aren't laughing at us. No, nice. yeah, called in us, yeah. Calling us uh, egotistical maniacs. <laughs> um, uh, Hazard's availability is a big thing regarding that, really quickly. There's, yeah. We don't know yet, obviously, if Hazard's going to be playing. There's so many reports saying he is, others saying he's not, and that's probably going to be one of the, the bigger factors. They um, submitted their squad earlier and he's not in the squad. Oh, after all that? that yes, yeah, okay. literally, yeah, yeah, literally an hour ago uh, as we recorded. I play against him. Similar to yeah. us. Yeah. Oh, oh, well. But to be fair, Hazard's had a few a few clutch moments against us in a Chelsea shirt. So him not playing not and Vinicius, anymore, no, not no, no, I don't think so. Um, but no, yeah, all of that first and hype, and he's he's not in the uh, he's not in the squad. But obviously, you'd expect him to return to the uh, the the second leg, wouldn't you? So yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, on to our unpopular opinion then. Uh, and it is literally just me versus Tommy, and I don't know whether Tommy will agree with me or not over this, so uh, it might not be unpopular. It be interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so sticking with our first transfer story about Erling Haaland, purely because of the actions of Mino Raiola and the fact that, you know, Haaland has not let him do this, but he certainly had to give him, you know, his permission and mm. his father, you know, Alf would have had to do the same as well. I would, given the choice of two in an ideal world, in a dream world where FSG splashed the cash this summer, my personal choice who I would still bring in would be Kylian Mbappe over Haaland. Um, 
I think it's a split decision. I think you'll have people listening to this nodding their heads and they'll have people furiously punching their steering wheels or, you know, shaking an angry fist. Um, I think Kylian Mbappe has, I think he has a lot more to offer as in versatility wise. I think that he's a fantastic forward. I mean, Haaland is too, you know, you could flip a coin, but the actions of, you know, the actions of Raiola this week, let's say he does come t- to us, it would happen all over again in three years. You know, it would be it would be Coutinho going to Barcelona times ten because Haaland would. You know, let's let's not. I do think he'll be one of, if not the best forwards in three years' time, and if not in a year's time. Yeah, you know, wow. and that media storm is he, he's just going to have everybody around him at all times, and we know what Rayola is like. He's he's not bothered about loyalty. He's more bothered about you know swimming in his millions and. Whoever Haaland goes to, I'll be very surprised if he extends his contract. So for me, Mbappe edges it. And if I could sign anybody this summer, my choice would be Kylian Mbappe. How about you, Tommy? See, it's not great for the unpopular opinion. Do you know, I agree with you for different reasons. I think I prefer Mbappe regardless. But I think there's a good, there's a very good counter argument to it. So I'll try to play the devil's advocate for the sake of it. I do think that Haaland... I think you'd argue that we've not had an out and out. You know, I'm Firmino's number one fan. I can tell you better than anyone. Firmino's not a striker. He's not an out and out nine, despite that ridiculous 17 18 season. Whereas Haaland is. I mean, Mbappe could if Klopp wanted to develop that way. And he's definitely got the tools to do it and whatnot. And uh, Mbappe's more versatile. So I guess, I, I mean, I'm arguing your case further for you. <laughs> but Haaland is just an out and out striker. Someone we've not had for, well, for a while now. And someone I think we're missing. We're, we've been missing goals this year. And Haaland is. I just think Haaland is more of a goals guarantee than Mbappe is. I think. I think probably adjust quicker. That could just be me talking a load of rubbish, and they'd both adjust very quickly. It could be the other way around. But I do think Haaland would adapt quicker. And I think it'd be easier to, you know, improve what we have currently right now. But I think Mbappe is a better sort of brand, and you know, factors like that. And yeah. Mbappe. Let's face it, Haaland is a killer, isn't he, in front of goal? Yeah. Uh, I think a couple of uh, weeks ago, you said he has an insane shot to goal ratio as well. Like, he doesn't miss many shots that hit on target. No. Um, he's ridiculous. He's also a little bit more tested, I think, than Mbappe in regards to like domestic level. I, I rate the Bundesliga higher than the French league, although this season PSG yeah. is struggling, Dortmund are struggling, you know, so. Um, Two weeks are the same. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I think so. I think a Premier League or La Liga is certainly a step up. Haaland's Champions League record is slightly better as well, and um, Mbappe is, is is quite good too. But Haaland is outrageous. Yeah, he's um, scored ten goals, is not he, in the Champions League this season already? That's ridiculous. So it it's is. like twenty and fourteen appearances or something with outrageous like that. Yeah, yeah, which is insane at twenty years old. He's um, already got an Anfield Champions League goal. Could he add to that? I think a lot of people would argue that they'd prefer that to Mbappe. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Um, it's just just for me, I just can't stand Raiola. Maybe that's what clouds my judgment a little bit. And I also like Mbappe. I think you know he's the Nike brand, as you've said. Yeah, um, the Ronaldo brand. He's the cool, you know. Yeah. He's, yeah. He is, he's, a, cool, he's a cool dude, but as you said, Haaland is a. Uh, He's been made in a laboratory. I don't think he's human. <laughs> no, um, yeah. And that so might yeah. be more than that's needed for us. I'm sure there's an argument to make for that. I'd also, I also think if Haaland goes to Man City, as pessimistic as it might sound, I think City have the next five years wrapped up. Yeah, so I can't see how we'd compete with City plus Haaland. No. Well, hopefully Pep's not a lion. And, we, and Haaland, that was ideal when, when that rail news broke out. I was quite, you know, buzzing a bit just on the off chance that he doesn't end up City, doesn't end up at City. I wouldn't mind if he's just in Spain, ideally Barcelona, maybe. Don't like Real Madrid as much. He's not in the Premier League. He's not terrorising us. No, and he, he, you know that he would. So, although we've got Van Dijk, so maybe not. He could sit. He could come to the Premier League and fail the Van Dijk test. Most people do. Most people do. Alan has before. Oh, he's got it. Yeah. Yeah, he's, that, that didn't count. He came on as a sub. He didn't play, did he? He came Captain, on as a sub. Nothing to do with Van Dijk, it was attacking. 
yeah, that was, yeah, exactly. Anyone could have scored that. But yeah, so there we go. That's our unpopular opinion. Let us know, please, on the Twitter. Uh, we might even put a poll out. Who would you prefer, Mbappe or Haaland? And that is our unpopular opinion. Uh, and on that note as well, we're going to sign off um, a very short, sharp and sweet podcast today. Uh, but I would thank Tommy for joining us and for everybody else at home who's listened. Thank you to you too. Uh, and we will say goodbye to you all. Up the Reds, as always, and hopefully we'll join you again after a Champions League win against Madrid. Until then, take it easy. See you later.